The news day continues here on One News Now. I'm Pauline Verzosa. Some Duterte supporters gathered around and inside Edsa Shrine yesterday. They held a prayer or vigil, apparently, to show support for the vice president. It was not clear, though, who organized the event, with some saying it was just voluntary. The number of people reached around 300 to 400 on Tuesday. A lot of people came in here. At hindi ito yung mga usual na nagpupunta dito sa Edsa Shrine. Ang dami nila. And then not only that, pagdating naman ng 12-15 mass, uh, mas dumami pa. So kaya sabi ko, this is something extraordinary. At nakita na namin ngayon na may mga vloggers. So nagkaroon na kami ng inkling, pero merong purpose ito. Pero hindi na rin naman kami nagtanong kung ano talaga ang purpose nila, kung saan nang galing. Kasi sila din mismo, hindi nila alam eh. A Congressman Joel Chua of the House Quad Committee underscores the accountability of the Office of the Vice President's personnel in the alleged misuse of confidential funds. Here's an excerpt from his interview on The Big Story. Sana papunta ang next hearing ng Committee of Good Government? Sa Friday po, meron po kaming uh, committee hearing. Uh, hopefully, uh, dito po matanong na po ang ating uh, Vice President. I was curious actually, Kong Joel, no? how come you didn't ask her any questions yesterday doon sa hearing because she already took her oath? In fact, I was um, expecting na mababombard siya with questions but instead, you know, na yung mga staff pa rin niya ang uh, tinanong. Well, actually, yung mga congressman po kasi they were, uh, uh, pre they, they prepared a question with respect to the four uh, staff of the vice president. Um, kumbaga, parang ano yan, laying the predicate. Eh. So, hopefully, unfortunately pala, the, one of the staff of the vice president suffered some uh, health. So, nung, uh, during the course of interpolation, Medyo nag-tumaas uh, yung kanyang blood pressure at saka dinala po siya sa ospital. So the Vice President uh, requested that uh, she be accompanied by the Vice President. Kaya nga po biglang yung Vice President eh, umalis, sinamaan po niya yung kanyang staff. So may mga congressman naman po na supposed to be eh, magtatanong kay Vice President. But unfortunately, eh, umalis po yung Vice President dahil medyo... Naubos po yung kalahati ng araw po namin sa mga admin matters eh. Kaya medyo napatagal po yung mga line of questioning ng mga congressman. Uh, congressman, speaking of the OVP staff, uh, Zulaika Lopez says she will take legal steps to uh, object to the house detention extension. Um, and uh, Attorney Sal Panelo said this is an excessive use of contempt power given by the, con uh, the Constitution to Congress. You've been called out for... Um, congressional overreach, what would you have to say to that? I mean, what do the House rules really say vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the rights of your resource persons? Bakit kailangan sa Correctional Institute for Women? Well, wala naman po may gusto na mangyari yan. Unfortunately, during the uh, period of detention of Torlaico Lopez, eh, medyo marami po kasing nangyari eh. Um, there was a uh, breach of protocol. Um, yung vice president po eh, was insisting to sleep um, in the vicinity of the House of Representatives. There was even a uh, letter requesting from the vice president that she be allowed to jog within the uh, uh, compound. Meanwhile, Senator Risa Ontiveros dropped some revelations on the last Senate POGO hearing yesterday. The chairwoman of the Senate Committee on Women and Children revealed that former economic advisor Michael Yang was involved with the Chinese intelligence operations. She also presented a photo of Yang and self-confessed Chinese spy She Zhijiang as her proof. The hearing also unveiled that some POGO hubs were used to spread misinformation and fake news in the country. Mukhang hindi lang sugal, scamming at trafficking ang pakay ng mga compound na ito, kundi fake news din. Di ako magtataka kung yung mga atake sa akin at sa mga kasamahan ko, gaya ni Senator Sherwin, 
ay galing din sa mga pogo. This Ms. Bamban Tarlac Mayor Alice Guo was not present in the Senate hearing yesterday. The court did not grant the Senate's request to have her for the last time because of her scheduled hearing on her criminal cases. But Ontiveros vow that she will craft laws that will prevent another case of Alice Guo. Oh, Huaping, sisiguraduhin ko na hindi ka na makakaulit dito. At matututo ang lahat sa gagawin sa'yo. Now for the latest on the weather, the northeast monsoon or Amihan continues to trigger rains in northern Luzon. Affected areas include Cagayan Valley, Cordillera, and Ilocos region. The intertropical convergence zone will also bring rains in several areas. These include Caraga, Davao, Soxargen, Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. The rest of the country may also experience rains due to localized thunderstorms. A Filipino fugitive is set to be deported from Indonesia today. 35-year-old Hector Alduin Pantoliana was arrested in Bali on November 9 after he tried to leave the country. His biometric data in an Indonesian airport's computer registry identified him as a fugitive wanted for persecution. Pantoliana was involved in running a $67 million investment scam in the Philippines. Pantolia was also listed on an Interpol warrant on October 31. A white woman in Florida was sentenced to 25 years in prison for killing her African-American neighbor during their dispute. 60-year-old Susan Lorings was found guilty of manslaughter for killing 35-year-old A.J. Owens last year in the town of Ocala. The two had an ongoing dispute over Owens' children playing in a nearby grassy area. Now, Owens confronted Lorings for throwing roller skates and an umbrella at her children. In response, Lorings went to Owens' house and killed her with a single shot from her handgun. The killing prompted protests from the African-American community in Ocala. Members of the Philippine business community gathered for the Business World's Forecast 2025 Forum. Para bigyan ang mukha ang balita, Mobile Journal, Amy Atienza. Nothing beats walking towards a sustained growth path. Kaya naman nagsama-sama ang mga business enthusiasts sa bansa para sa Business World Forecast 2025 Forum. With its goal to keep the Philippine economy on moving forward, the country's leading business newspaper, Business World, held its annual forecast convention yesterday. Business World Editor-in-Chief Cathy Rose Garcia aimed to discuss various issues and possible plans of action to ensure stability in our economy. Our goal is to um, create a venue where business leaders can discuss the pressing, pressing issues for 2025 and what strategies they can adopt to drive growth. The program consisted three panel discussions with speakers from different top local corporations with the likes of Ayala Corporation, SM Investments Corporation, and Megawide Construction Corporation. The discussions focused on the importance of investments for sustained economic growth, impact of infrastructure and mobility on economy, and suggestions to keep retail prices in pace with consumers changing ways. Focuses on themes of resilience, adaptation, and shared success at the Philippines works to build on the foundations of a stable, inclusive economy. There were also talks from professionals to help the Philippine business community to propel towards excellence in the global market. In this light, Department of Finance Under Secretary Dominique Velasquez saw that Filipinos have the capability to rise internationally. The Philippines is no longer just preparing for economic takeoff. It is stand ready to soar as a global economic superstar, fueled by resilience, innovation, and determination of our people. Now more than ever, is the perfect time to ride this momentum. With this forum, Garcia also hopes that it can help Filipinos in making better decisions as business owners and as consumers. I think it's important to know that what will what is the outlook for 2025 and beyond because it will help uh, 
decision makers and even ordinary Filipinos make um, their decisions based on what will happen in 2025. Business World Forecast 2025 was held at the Grand Hyatt Hotel in Bonifacio Global City, Taguig. Mobile journalist Amy Achenza, PR1 News. And those are the top stories of the hour. I'm Pauline Verzosa. We are One News.